What's up, guys? Back with another edu- <laughs> Sorry, sorry. It's Friday. You know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. Let's get them. Continuing our trend of new challengers. Like I said, we've, we're getting off the Gary Brecka, Paul Saladino, Dave Asprey roller coaster, and we're bringing in new folks. And this week, we don't have a person. I mean, I, I guess it is a person. We have a company called Apex Laboratories, who, again, I've seen this already. It's some of the craziest shit. I've ever seen. And of course, there's a doctor behind it. What do you know? Lifting weights, <laughs> doing interval training, doing sprints, doing cardio, doing any of that stuff doesn't build muscle. You oh, see, in doesn't. 2020, these Harvard researchers made a shocking discovery. They were stunned to find that as you get older, your muscles effectively go to sleep. <laughs> what this means is no matter how much you strain them, trying to grow them with exercise or protein, they simply don't respond. Oh. They're out cold. Now, when you're young, exercise and protein send powerful growth signals to your muscles. But over the years, your muscles stop responding. And no matter how many hours you work out, Doesn't matter, guys. how many pounds of steak you eat, or protein shakes you chug, your muscle mass only goes one way, down. Experts call this anabolic resistance. Because your muscles- Me, hi, really I'm the expert. The I wrote some on this. In fact, study after study now prove anabolic resistance to be the number one underlying cause of muscle mass loss. Oh, you can cite the PubMed article. Anabolic resistance is not some rare disease. It's practically inevitable as you age. You see, you get better reading times, off a teleprompter, to be hunting, honest. Fighting, really anything which involves. Oh my your God, videos of cavemen. I can't. All right, I, I, I can't take it anymore. We're, we're, Dr. Tracy Galpin, no, sorry, Dr. Tracy Gappin spent two decades at the forefront of men's health. As the founder of the Gappin Institute for High Performance Health, he provides bespoke health advice to industry leaders who I've never heard of him before. He's a board certified urologist, best selling author of Male 2.0 and Codes of Longevity. Let's take his claims first and then let's actually go through what he's selling. So, first of all, is anabolic resistance a thing? Yes, there is data to show that as you age, your muscles don't respond the same way to anabolic stimuli as they do when you're young, specifically nutrient anabolic stimuli. So there was a study back in, I think, 2004 in FASPA from Volpe, I believe it was, showing that mTOR, which is the signaling complex that's responsible for this thing called translation initiation, Tracy, you can look it up in my PhD thesis, and that is the rate limiting step of muscle protein synthesis. And they showed that at the same dosage of protein, young people have a proportionately greater response of muscle protein synthesis. And this is related to increased mTOR activity relative to old people. So that part, that's the one truth that he had in there. What he didn't tell you was that old people can still get the same response as young people, they just need a greater amount of total protein. This idea that your body doesn't respond to protein as you age, no, you just need a little bit more. And him saying it doesn't respond to lifting weights, complete and utter f***ing horse And how many meta-analyses of human Randomized control trials in elderly, would you like before you can see that elderly respond just fine to lifting weights? In fact, elderly people tend to gain the same amount of muscle mass as a percentage of their starting lean mass as young, but young have more muscle when they start. And so therefore, if you start and you have 70 kilos of lean mass and you put on 10%, that's seven kilos, but if you start and you have 50 kilos of lean mass, you put on five kilos. But as a relative of their starting lean mass, they tend to gain similar amounts. So no, Tracy, they don't stop responding. And oh, by the way, what is his magical muscle defense formula that he's selling? Oh, look at that, it has protein. It has a whopping 10 grams of protein from whey hydrolyzate, which whey is a high quality protein, so cool, but 10 grams in elderly will not stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Now they added a gram of leucine. At that point, 
probably will get a muscle protein synthesis response, but research has shown that the intact whey protein at the same amount of leucine stimulates muscle protein synthesis greater than free leucine. So this is just an extra ingredient for him to make it seem like it's special. Then there's vitamin D3. Okay, fine. Not gonna help muscle protein synthesis, but whatever. A lot of people are deficient in vitamin D. Vitamin B12. Okay, that's not gonna help with muscle protein synthesis. Chromium picolinate. Oh my God, what is this? 1998? Chromium picolinate was popular when I started reading muscle magazines. It has been shown to do absolutely in people who are not type 2 diabetic. You can just take that out. Then it's got HMB. HMB, once again, has been shown to do very little in healthy people. Now, if you have some sort of muscle wasting disease, it can reduce the rate of muscle protein degradation. But there's only a thousand milligrams in here. In studies, they use 1,500 to 3,000 milligrams. Where's the leading expert in longevity on that, Tracy? Then it's got ursolic acid. This was popular 10 years ago. It didn't stick around because all the studies that showed it worked were in animals. Uh, it doesn't appear to do a whole lot. And then it's got chromium amylopectin. Yeah, so protein and leucine. So I guess it's better than not eating anything, but this is not, it's not even better than regular whey protein. But here's the problem. These guys can't sell you whey protein because they can't make a lot of money off of it. Because whey protein, I know, I sell it. It has the smallest margins of any product I sell. Why? Because it is ubiquitous. Thousands of companies sell it, probably tens of thousands of companies. And therefore, it drives down the price because it's so competitive. So what do people like this do? They make up some fancy version of whey protein so they can justify selling it to you at five times the normal cost. Dr. Tracy Gappin is a urologist in Sarasota, Florida, who has an overall rating on health grades of three out of five stars. Sounds like he wasn't the greatest urologist in the world. Figured not a whole lot of money there, can't get rich off that. Rebrand, call myself a longevity expert and a muscle, what did he call himself? A muscle aging expert? I don't know. And sell some overpriced junk supplement as the solution. I just really can't stand people like this because this is taking one thing that there's a kernel of truth to and then putting 50 false statements with it and people go, oh yeah, that's all right, that's right. But what it does is it's very inviting to people because it allows them to go, oh, you know, you're right. I'm not unhealthy because I haven't been working out or eating right. It's because I'm older and I have anabolic resistance. No, 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 no. There are plenty of old people who still get strong, who still gain a lot of muscle. In fact, I set a world squat record in the IPF in 2015 of 668 pounds. I was 33 years old at the time. That record was later broken by a man named David Ricks. He squatted 683 pounds at 57 years old. So please try to tell me that it doesn't matter how much you lift, how much protein you take in, you can't build muscle because that is an utter lie. Don't listen to people like this who take your power away and try to make you feel like you have no agency over your body. You have agency if you train hard, if you eat right, you can still build muscle into old age. Hope you guys have a great one. I'm out.